Hey y'all, welcome to the channel. Today we're checking out top 10 British bands who never cracked America. These musical groups found fame in the UK, but they remained relatively obscure in the US. Okay. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, that. and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 British bands who never cracked America. <laughs> Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're focusing on bands that never experienced continuous commercial success in America. Girls Aloud, never heard of them. Number 10, Supergrass. I have heard of Supergrass. For a British band to successfully cross over into America, it's crucial to capitalize upon the buzz. And for Oxford group Supergrass, well, they failed to expand beyond their native demographic. They did some stuff here. With their 1995 debut album, I Should Coco, Supergrass briefly reached the number one in the UK charts and actually released two more albums by the end of the 90s. By that time though, music trends had changed significantly in the US and, well, Supergrass began to drift away, barely cracking the US Top 200 with 2002's Life on Other Planets. Sadly, it all ended with an internal Twitter beef. I think I... I bought a Supergrass album in... I think I had 2002, the 2002 album they're talking about. It had... I remember the first song was called Za, and it was a very beatly sounding song. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, Life on Other Planets is what it's called. Yeah, I don't think they did very well here. But I've heard of them, at least. Number 9, Madness. Yeah, Our House. Now, these... During the yes. late 70s and early 80s, this band was far more than just a one-hit wonder in the UK. In fact, Madness would even influence the American band that would ultimately become No Doubt. Right. Classic song. Yes, and I remember like this. And like Gwen Stefani's versatile group, Madness didn't align themselves with a specific genre, as they blended together a variety of musical styles. Oh. With that being said, Madness was, in fact, linked to skinheads in their early days, which perhaps negatively affected larger-scale opportunities. Regardless, the really? UK band experienced great success during their initial 10-year run, but never once did one of their acclaimed albums crack the US Top 100 charts. Really? I've heard of Madness and that song Our House. The album that that was on didn't crack the top 10 or top 100. That's surprising. That song Our House played on MTV constantly. Although I can't think of any other song of theirs that I've heard. So I guess maybe here they were a one hit wonder. I know, especially in the US, in the music industry, a musical artist does need to have a very specific niche. I mean, they don't have to, but it helps with marketing and it helps for the audiences to know what to expect. So if they're genre jumping, you know, that can hurt them. I could see how that would hold them back a little bit. Record companies here want you to already have your your niche and your style and the your essentially the whole business plan for your musical act already set before they even sign you. It used to be that they would help you develop that stuff, but now they, they want it pre-done, pre-contract, fulfilled. Number eight, take that. I guess it's a boy band? Oh, I've heard this. Yeah. By the mid-90s, the legendary music executive Clive Davis signed this UK boy band to a record deal with Arista, but take that had already begun to self-destruct. So oh. Get it on. In their prime, Gary Barlow stunned critics with his songwriting skills, and a young Robbie Williams displayed his obvious star power. And so, Robbie Take That Williams. seemed prime for America. Yet, Williams quit in 1996, just as the pop scene was about to change in the United States. The group initially formed in the early 90s, and despite three well-received albums, Take That just didn't seem to have the right amount of mojo to keep it going. Although, the core members would later reunite with Williams in 2010. I've definitely heard of Robbie Williams. I've definitely heard of Take That. And I've heard this song before. Not this song, but um, 
whatever I did, whatever I said. But I guess they're saying the year was 1997. Those last few years of the 90s, the music here was really changing a lot. And then Britney Spears and NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, all that stuff was popping up. But that seems really in line with Take That. Hmm, maybe it was just an oversaturated market and they couldn't break through. Number seven, Kasabian. Never heard of them. American indie fans have certainly heard of this group from Leicester, despite the fact that Kasabian's lead singer, Sergio Pizzorno, once noted that he hates indie bands. So that's one thing to consider when thinking about Kasabian's failed American crossover. Yeah, I've never heard of them. In the UK, they reached number four on the UK charts with their self-titled 2004 debut, and the next several albums managed to reach number one. By 2013, however, guitarist Jay Mella actually left to play with Liam Gallagher, formerly of Oasis, oh. while Tom Meehan cited unfinished business in America around the same time. However, the 2014 album 4813 failed to chart in the US, and maybe Kasabian just wasn't ready for a committed American crossover. Yeah, the 2000 teens were a tough time for rock bands in America because it started to uh, just fall out of favor. And a lot of pop music here was hip hop influenced. So a lot of drum machines, synths, and um, not many guitars. I guess it just kind of fell out of fashion. Number six, Happy Mondays. My Never heard man. of them. You know, he talks over it, man. You twist my melon, man. man. Now this Mojoholics is what you call a Madchester band. From 1980 to 1993, Happy Mondays managed to gain quite the following in the UK, certainly with their 1990 album Pills and Thrills and Belly Aches. But considering that a band like New Kids on the Block was big in the United States at the time, well that's just one reason why the Happy yeah. Mondays sound failed to connect with the American mainstream. Makes sense. Even so, this is a band that heavily influenced some of the more notable UK bands of the 90s, such as Oasis and The Stone Roses. Yet their sound embodies more of a distinct Euro vibe rather than trendy American hooks. Number 5, Stereophonics. Have I heard them? From the late right. 90s to the early 2000s, this Welsh band established a reputation for their killer live shows. However, Stereophonics ultimately dismissed original drummer Stuart Cable in 2003, reportedly because he was more interested in his TV show than the band. Sadly, Cable <laughs> would pass away just seven years later. In their prime, Stereophonics was known as one of the most talented UK bands, releasing five number one albums throughout the 2000s. Yet only one of those, 2001's Just Enough Education to Perform, managed to crack the US Top 200 charts. Yeah, I don't recognize that. Despite the lack of American buzz, Stereophonics continues in their native Wales as one of the most highly regarded UK bands of the 21st century. Number 4, Manic Street Creatures. Never heard this before. Like many overly ambitious rock bands, this Wales group infamously hyped up their 1992 debut album, Generation Terrorists, and, well failed to crack the top 10 in the UK charts. In fact, the Manics wouldn't land a number one until six years later. This coming three years after the mysterious disappearance of the celebrated songwriter and guitarist, Richie Edwards. He disappeared? Their music is pure rock, something that US rock enthusiasts could easily get behind, or so it would seem. But while the Manics became iconic figures overseas, their sound just never translated to American mainstream consumers. Decades after the loss of Edwards, however, the Manics continue to wail. Richard Edwards. Edwards disappeared on February 1st, 1995, on a day when he and Bradfield were due to fly to the United States on a promotional tour of the Holy Bible. In the two weeks before his disappearance, Edward withdrew 200 pounds a day from his bank account, which totaled 2,800 pounds by the day. It is unknown. Okay. The night before he disappeared, Edwards gave a friend a book called N Novel with Cocaine instructing her to read the introduction, which details the author saying, in a mentalist, staying in a mental asylum before vanishing. In the two weeks that followed, Edwards was apparently spotted in the Newport Passport Office and at Newport Bus Station by a fan who was unaware that he was missing. On February 14th, police discovered his car 
and it looked like it had been lived in. Since then, Edwards has reportedly been spotted in a market in Goa, India, and on the islands of Fuerteventura and Lanzarote. That none of those have been confirmed. In 2008, he officially was presumed dead. I mean, it sounds like he just wanted to get the hell out. He might still be around. Number three, Pulp. Pulp, oh, have I heard of them? No, By I'm the not. time of this band's success during the mid-90s Britpop era, they had already been together well over 15 years. And until then, Pulp had never actually landed a gold record, let alone an American hit. All right. But albums like Different Class and This Is Hardcore teased at a potential American crossover, with the latter finding its way to the US charts in 1996. At this time, though, reported drug use and internal scuffling shook up the band, and Pulp's final That'll album was ultimately released in the early fall of 2001, peaking at number 6 in the UK charts. For a brief time, this group was on par with the likes of Oasis, but like the Gallaghers, Pulp just couldn't manage to keep the unit together. <laughs> Number two, The Jam. The Jam. Never heard of them. Fronted by the multi-talented Paul Weller, a man known for his distinct British compositions, I've heard of Paul this band Weller. came, saw, and conquered during their decade-long existence. Well, at least in the UK. I first felt a fist, and then a kick, I could now spell their breath. Aesthetically, the jam preceded punk, and they called it quits just as the new wave took off in the early 80s. In between, they released six acclaimed studio albums, with the last five climbing the UK charts. Truth be told, the jam had somewhat of a steady presence in the US charts during their run, but despite their stylized look and obvious talent, the party ended with the 1982 release, The Gift. And just like that, the jam was gone before Americans could catch on. It sounds like they were in the right place at the right time with the British New Wave, but then they just quit. And I've definitely heard of Paul Weller. Someone recommended his music to me. Oh, he's playing an Epiphone Casino. Very nice guitar. I have one myself. The Mod Father. <laughs> nice. Good play on words. British folks love those puns, don't they? Don't you? Well, it's good to know he, even though the jam quit, he still was able to get a career going. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Suede. Never heard of him. Animal Nitrate. <laughs> Maximo Park. Meet me on the Water Boys. When the midnight bells are chiming. Never heard of them. Number one, the Stone Roses. I have heard of them. If you're even vaguely familiar with the bravado and attitude of Oasis, well, let's just say the Gallagher brothers were inspired by the Stone Roses. Hmm. This is a band that once said America doesn't deserve us yet. And while they may have been right, the Stone Roses didn't seem in a hurry to record consistent music after the renowned 1989 debut. In fact, it took a full five years for the Manchester group to drop a second album, and the band folded for good less he than looks two like years later. Liam Gallagher Since right then, there. there has always been talks of a reunion, but it just never seems to happen. And so the Stone Roses will forever remain an acclaimed British rock band that failed to live up to the crossover potential. I've heard of them. I want to be adored. What's their top song? Oh, okay, I want to be adored as their top song. Yeah, I've never heard these. It does sound very 80s with all that reverb. Wow, I guess I heard a few of these. Let me just see. Supergrass, heard of. Madness, heard of. Take that, heard of. Kasabian, never heard of them. Happy Monday, nope. Stereophonics, uh, sort of, but I think I might just be thinking that that's the word stereophonic that I mean. The Manix, nope. Pulp, nope. The Jam, nope. Stone Roses. So I heard four of the ten. Maybe I need to check some of these bands out. I'm a huge Beatles fan, if you don't know that already. Anyway, great video. Thank y'all for recommending. Thank y'all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Later.